this time of year, there are three things that really get me going. One is like, I want to garden, I want greenery everywhere. Number two, I look at my garden and there are things that are overgrown that need pruning. And number three, I'm in a mood to organize and purge every cabinet and closet I have. So this is a great project to combine all three of those. It's a kitchen succulent garden. And what I've done here is I've gotten sort of vintage or old or just secondhand kitchen items and planted them with like beautiful lush succulents. So these little mini oasis that look great tucked away in any little corner or window ledge outside or inside. So to get started, what we're gonna do is get your succulents. Now you have a couple of options. Now obviously you can just go to um, any of the garden stores, any hardware stores really, and buy your succulents. They don't cost that much. You can usually find a huge variety, but knowing that I am frugal um, and because of my gardening obsessions, I use this as a great opportunity to prune and thin out my current succulents. So I've got a lot of succulents around the house. Some are in the yard, some are in pots. I've got this one beautiful planter on the front porch that does well, it doesn't get too much sun um, so the things get a little leggy and need weeding. So there are two types of thinning that you can do. Um, plants that grow in sort of the hen and chick method, which is what my grandmother always called these. If you look behind this big, beautiful, blooming succulent at the base, I've got these two little babies that are just sprouting out from the mama's stem. For these, all you're gonna do is gently grab them, tug them, and they should release pretty easily. If you've looked, they've already got roots growing out of the stem. These are ready to transplant right away. Now these other succulents in the back of the pot, they really don't get enough sun, so they're always growing trying to reach it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pruning shears. Now, before you prune anything, you always wanna wipe them down with a little bit of alcohol just to kill any bacteria that might be hanging around from your last project. Clip them close to the soil and pull them out. I've got three here that I've done. If you notice, those bases are super, super sort of juicy. So what you want to do is heal those before you actually plant them. Very easy process. What you're going to do is pull off any of the extra leaves um, about two to three inches down from the rosette and then go ahead and clip it. Once you clip it, you see that it's very meaty and juicy and you don't want to put this directly into the soil because it's an easy entryway for bacteria lay these on a tray or a piece of paper in a shady location for about a week or two. They don't need to be watered because what succulents do is they store the water in their leaves. So they'll be absolutely fine. The bottom will heal and then they will be all ready to plant. So now I've got my succulents all ready to go. I've got a mixture of different colors, textures, because that's what's really going to keep it interesting. Now it's time to get your kitchen pieces ready. So. I've got so many things. I, I have sort of an, an issue. I see like old chip like mixing bowls. They're beautiful. I buy them. I then have too many. Um, so this is a great way to use them. I of course don't want to damage them because I may want to use them for something else later. So there are a couple of ways that you can prep them for planting and you won't damage them. So if you've got something like a colander that already has holes at the bottom, you're set to go. You can plant straight in that and that'll provide good drainage. Um, now, if it's something that has big openings, like a sieve or something like that, you're afraid soil's gonna come out, just line it with a piece of burlap or cheesecloth before you plant, that'll keep the dirt in place. For things like this casserole dish or this mixing bowl that don't have any drainage, I don't wanna have to drill into the bottom because obviously that would ruin the piece. All I'm gonna do is do one layer of gravel or rock on the bottom and that'll create a reservoir for water to go because succulents do not like being waterlogged. So now that our kitchen items are all prepped, all we're gonna do is add the soil. Regular potting soil that has some perlite mixed in um, is best, or if you can find a cactus medium, that's also great. You want something that has good drainage. No clay soil, because uh, that's not good for the succulents. Go ahead and fill up your pots um, to about half an inch from the rim. I'd like to have a little bit of a plan when I'm planting, mostly due with color and texture. So. For my silver sort of stainless steel colander, I'm going to pick the succulents that have a lot of blues and grays and greens because I think it'll look really pretty once I have little undertones of silver. And for the casserole dish with the blues, they're ones that have the blue and red mix. I'm going to use some of those to mix in. Um, again, I want some big ones, but the big ones near the back or center. And then the smaller succulents around the front edge and around the sides. Also a good tip is to 
cluster smaller rosettes together to create a sort of focal point, um, as opposed to placing them sort of willy-nilly around. That way you get some real drama in the piece. And there you go. Two absolutely gorgeous and absolutely easy kitchen succulent gardens. Water them when about a third of the way down the soil is dry and then only a light watering, especially in the ones without drainage holes. Put them wherever the succulents are meant to be and they'll be very happy.